Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today for our Bold BI webinar. All right, so first off, uh, I'm gonna introduce myself. Uh, my name is Zachary Smith. I am a Bold BI expert here at SyncFusion, and I will be uh, presenting this product for you today. I'm also one of the salespeople who you might hear from after the fact about some special promotions we are currently running. But without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get started with today's presentation. So the first place I'm gonna show us today is the Bold BI website. So here, if you go to boldbi.com, you can take a look at all the offerings that we have with Bold BI and our cloud-based dashboard. A few of the most important pieces of this website we're going to go over first. Uh, the first one starting off is our documentation under resources. So if you go to this tab, there's a nice feature here where Everything on the left side, if you have any questions or any uh, concerns about a lot of things here, they're all answered here for you. So with this being the case, uh, we have a lot of different options um, for things that you can get answered here. If you have, uh, let's say specifically, a, a need to go through the presentation again, but in a Word format with pictures, we do have that with the Bold BI walkthrough. So if you're more of a visual learner or if you want to uh, take this and do this on your own time, uh, with a step-by-step -step guide, this is the place to do it. So you can download this as well. Um, it's a great way to share this if you don't want to share a video with your colleagues, and this will explain how to create a dashboard and also answer any questions you may or may not have. The next place I'm going to show here is our pricing page. So here uh, you can see the different packages that we offer. Another reason why I'm showing this is because if you go here and start your trial, you'll get access to a free 15 day trial for yourself. Uh, this will allow you to experiment with all of what Bold BI has to offer. You'll have free access to all of our tools and such. You'll be able to build your first dashboard and really get your hands dirty. And that's the whole goal of this is to really get you involved and see if this is gonna be the right fit for your company. You can also see that these packages are tiered by user count. And so I want to also mention that a user is anyone that needs privileged access to these tools. So anyone that needs to have permissions to edit, view, or create specific dashboards, data sources, or schedules would be considered a user. So we do have packages of 10, 25, and then 50 with our enterprise edition. Uh, but if you're looking for something a, a bit more customized, uh, we do have options for that. And you're more than welcome to have a conversation with the salespeople uh, when you have a conversation with them. All right. And the last part of the website we're going to go over today is our solutions tab. Now here, there are multiple different uh, venues of business here that we can take a look at. And each one of these are pre-built dashboards made for those industries. So right here, I clicked on IT, and you can view by clicking these buttons here, a live demo of this dashboard that has a sample data already filtered in. So this is a live demo, an example of a working created dashboard. And realistically, this dashboard, when we built it, took about uh, 10 to 15 minutes or so. And so this is a very quick build. And my goal today is to show you exactly how to create something like this. We're going to replicate something similar with uh, sales mind, uh, sales in mind. And uh, our goal for today is going to be for you to be able to do the exact same thing in a very short amount of time. So without further ado, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go in to our account. So once you log in and once you have a site set for yourself, once you've created your free trial, you'll have a hub that looks very similar to this, although it will be all blank as you wouldn't have created all these dashboards for yourself. Now, there are a few things I'm going to mention before we go ahead and get started building our first dashboard. And the first thing here is our profile right here. We have two options for creating incidents and viewing incidents. Now with our incidents, uh, this isn't just made for uh, bug fixes and such, although you can request bug fixes if you deal with anything. Our hope is that you won't have any bugs and that everything's going to work perfectly smooth, but uh, all tech, as we know, can rarely and occasionally have issues. So if anything does happen, which we hope it doesn't, you're more than welcome to submit a request. And we will get back to you very quickly on that. With this as well, you can actually create an incident um, specifically designated for a feature request. So if there is something that you would like to see that we do not currently have or something that you think would be a strong addition to the website and the dashboards, you can request that as a feature and we will look to see if we can implement that for you and for everybody else in the world. 
All right, so moving on, we're going to go ahead and get started. We're building our first dashboard. So you'll come up here and hit the blue plus sign, and that will give us two options here, primarily. The first option is to start from scratch, which is what we will be doing from uh, today. This will allow us to create a brand new dashboard um, from nothing. It basically gives us a blank canvas to work within. We also have the option to start from a pre-built template. So if you decide to go with this option, there are pre-built dashboards that you can just plug your data right into. And realistically, you can be up and running with something that's already pre-built for you uh, in only a few minutes. Uh, but for today's example, we're going to show you how to build one from your, uh, for yourself. All right, so while we wait for this to pop up, um, I'm gonna mention that we do have a, a large blank canvas here with which we can work within. Now, if you decide that this isn't enough space for you, we do have something called slideshows. What this will allow you to do is essentially have another blank canvas of the same size with which you can uh, you can go between. So if you decide that you wanted to have two dashboards, but you wanted to see them at the same time, all you'd have to do is click this button over here and work within a slideshow and you'd have two dashboards at your disposal or as many as you would like. Also, in terms of our data, once we link our data here, there's a lot of questions about uh, when is my data update in here? Is this a live update? Uh, you can use the scheduling tool here to keep that data up to date uh, and have it auto refresh at whatever intervals you choose. But with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and break out into how to link our data to this dashboard. Because as we all know, this dashboard is only as good as the data that you're pulling into it. So this dashboard could be the best thing ever if you have the right data. So we're going to look at what the right data looks like. So if you go to the right hand side of the page, this little button over here, we'll be able to take a look at the data sources we have at our disposal. Now we have three different options here of how we can pull data in. The first is we can look at sample data. So this is data that the Bold BI already has pre-built in as uh, sample data that you can build a sample dashboard with if you just want to run some tests. We have a lot of different data fields here that you can work with. You can then also create a new data source and here we have listed all of our different data sources that we currently are able to pull from. As of right now, there are approximately 80 different data sources that we have at our disposal, with the number being projected at over 100 in the near future. This is also something that you can put in a feature request for if you see a data source, if you, I'm sorry, if you don't see a data source that you would like to use, then you can put in a feature request and we can see if we can have that implemented for you in a quick manner. But for today's example, I'm going to use a data source that I already have uh, used before. So when you've used the data source prior uh, to building a dashboard, you'll have it listed here. So for this, I already have a data source here. I'll just click that and I will add it to the page. Now you can add as many data sources as you would like. There is no limit. So if you decide that you want 10 different data sources in here to show all that information, you're more than welcome to do that. Now, once we've pulled in our data sources, you'll go over here to the edit function. And in here, we'll have a bit more of a drilled down view of what this data looks like. So first here at the bottom, we'll have a preview of what our data looks like. As you can see uh, how this data is displayed, we can see all of the different header columns. These are the data fields that will pull up and I'll show you here in just a few minutes. But you can see all the different numbers and columns that we have at our disposal. So all of this information is the information that we are going to be able to display in our dashboard. Now, a few things to mention in here, if you decide that some of these columns are columns that you don't necessarily want to see, you pulled in a large data source and you don't like maybe uh, this right here, you can hide this and it will remove it from what is shown. So it's a nice simple little tool. Also up here at the top, we have a join function. If you have more than one data source and you want to join those data sources together to show the information at the same time in the same widgets, you just use this function and you can join in similar data sources. We also have custom expressions that you can add to the data here. These more or less act as Excel functions. And so they are pre-built in uh, for you to use. We have a good number of these as well, and each one of them explains exactly how to use it and what it is used for. 
We also have custom filters that you can add to your data sources. And if you're tech savvy, as I am, I am not, there is a code view as well if you want to get into the nitty gritty of things as well. But as of right now, I think our data looks good to me. Everything looks like it needs to look. And so we're going to go ahead and save this and we are going to get started with building our first dashboard. So I'm going to go ahead and start with one of my favorite widgets here, something simple, just a basic bar chart. So you see I just drag and drop that in and we're going to uh, resize this to a, uh, a good size. I think I like it just about here. So once we have it sized appropriately to how we want it, we'll go up and hit this gear at the top right to go ahead and start editing this dashboard. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is assign the data to this chart by clicking at the assign data at the top. If you have multiple data sources, you can select which data source you want to use here at the top right. So for today's example, uh, I'm going to be building a, uh, a sales dashboard. So one of the things that uh, us salespeople always like to see are how many units we've sold. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that field in and you can see that's going to update in live time there. But that's not enough data for me. I also want to show this by what product we're selling to get an idea for all the different products and how those are being sold. So there we have then the six products that we have, but I want to show a little bit more. So I'm going to take another field here, let's say country, and we're going to pop it down here. We just drag and drop those in and right there in only a few seconds, you can see we've already created a very nice looking bar chart. Now within this data here as well, you can click the gear icon and change to any number of these accounts. We also have custom filters and edits that you can put in here. But I think this looks good for me right now, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it as it is. So we'll go back to properties, and this is where we start to edit how this actually looks. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is change the names. I don't think chart one is, a, is an appropriate name for what we're using here. So we're going to go ahead and name this units sold. We can also add in a subtitle and a description here but I'm going to pass on those as realistically, I don't need it for my purpose currently. And next, what I like to do is enable these animations as it gives you a nice smooth animation there whenever you load this dashboard and that is available on all of our widgets as well. And uh, one thing I'll also mention here in these basic settings is we can change this chart type to any number of charts that we have here. So let's say you decide that, uh, you know, I wanted the bar chart, but you know, I don't think it looks like what I want it to look like, and I think I want a column instead. Well, we can select that column, and we can change that data to reflect that without having to rebuild that widget. So we have a lot of different options here within each one of our widgets as well. But I think for today, I'm just going to stick with the bar chart because I like how that one looks. So next, I'm going to mention the legend here. So this down here is our legend. This is information. So if I take that away, you can see how that disappears. But I like to show this so we can tell what each one of these lines are going to show. Now within this, we can customize this to display what we want. We can group things together. We can change the text of how it looks. Uh, I'm going to leave it for the time being, but all of that is customizable. We also have an option of where you want to place that legend. So if we wanted to place it to the right, we could do that as well. But I personally like it at the bottom. Now, with this as well, we have a lot more customizable options here. Next is the link section. If we wanted to enable a URL clickable link within this dashboard, in this widget, we could. You would just select this and you would be able to, let's say right here, we'll take this product at Passio with the unit sold in the country of the United States. I could link a URL that links specifically to that product in the United States. And by clicking on this, it would take me directly to the web page for that. So that can be customized however you would like with whatever links that you would like. Next up, we have customizable options here. If you want to change the axis as well as the grid lines, we won't be messing with this today, but we do have options for that. Next up, we have a palette changer. So with this, we can change the colors within this widget. So if you decide that you don't like uh, the basic colors that are set, we have a large range of colors that you can change to. We also have multiple different palettes. If you'd like to change to something a bit more uh, pink or maybe blue or a bit brighter, you can do that. 
you can also create your own colors using this tool right here. And just to show an example, uh, this blue right here, I think it looks better if it's a, a nice turquoise. So changing that, you can see that just changes in real time and you can change every color on this widget. So a lot of people ask, you know, oh, maybe I only have, um, I have you know, 15 users or I have 150 users. You know, what's a package like that going to look like? Um, my recommendation to you is that everyone on this, uh, on this call today will be hearing from some associates in the office here. Uh, you can ask them those questions specifically uh, in regards to your user counts and they can uh, potentially look at a package and customize something for you, especially for those larger packages. Now with that also, yeah, while you're having those conversations with the associates in the office, um, they are also more than happy to do a customized demo for you. So if you have something that you're a bit more interested in, let's say this webinar didn't hit on one or two things that were specific to your industry, uh, they can go ahead and delve a bit deeper into that, answer your technical questions, and uh, hopefully uh, take you through a more customized view of what you're looking for. So what makes Bold BI unique and different from others? And what are the key aspects of Bold BI? So one of the things that we pride ourselves in is our 24 seven support. Uh, so with the support, you have access to unlimited support throughout the free trial, as well as throughout the subscription that you uh, pay for, which means you have no limit on the amount of tickets that you can create. You have no limit on the amount of features that you can request. And you are guaranteed to have an answer within 24 hours, although typically, depending on the time zone, it is much faster than that. We also like to pride ourselves in the user friendliness of our site. So for instance, me, I'm a salesperson. I'm just your, your everyday average guy, and I'm able to create these dashboards very quickly and realistically, I can get a dashboard up and running for someone in five to 10 minutes. Um, it's, it's a very quick process, and really we pride ourselves in the user friendliness of that. Uh, we do also offer help if you decide that you don't wanna build your own dashboard and you want someone else to do it for you. We have help that can assist in that. Uh, we have a uh, charge at $100 per hour for that consulting. And so we're able to kind of uh, take that for you and build what you would like um, throughout the whole process. So those are some of the things that I believe set us apart from some of our competitors. Um, and uh, yeah. So the next widget that I am going to show is going to be a simple pie chart. So we've already displayed our units sold. I think I wanna delve into something a little bit different today. So we're gonna go first off again to that assigned data tab. And today I think I wanna show for this one, let's look at our sales. And we're also gonna show this by product, I think. So once we've done that, the dashboard will refresh here and we'll have our nice pie chart. Now with this, I think, we're also gonna enable the animation just because it looks nice and I like it. We're gonna enable that legend to kind of give us a better idea for what each one of these look like. Perfect. Now with this as well, we also do have changeable options. So if you wanna show, let's say a donut chart instead of a pie chart, you can change it to that. So we'll leave it with the donut for today is, well, I'm hungry and it's early morning, so donuts sound pretty good to me. So within this as well, we can add in value suffixes if you decide to do that. And we have all the other customizable options, including palettes that we had with our bar chart. So if we wanna go in and I'm gonna change this blue again, just cause I like the nice turquoise and we're gonna go ahead and leave it at that. And just like that, we've created a nice pie chart. So you can see here, if you mouse over these, all the different values within that, and you can change that from a percent to actual numeric values if you so choose. But for this, I like to look at the percentage numbers for what I'm hoping to do for this. Great, so we're already halfway done filling up our space. And so the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show off a line chart. As these are very important tools. These are very widely used tools. So we're gonna go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. We're gonna use up a little bit more of this space. Perfect. So let's go ahead and start formatting this. Again, we're gonna start with our assigned data. And for this, we're gonna start looking at the profit that we're making. So profit, is the, that's the bottom line right there. We wanna know how much money we're making. So we'll also do this by product again. Let's see how much, see right there, one of our products is way at the top. But let's see how it shows 
by country. Let's get a look at all these different lines. Perfect. Great. So now that we have that here, we can go back and customize this as well. We'll enable that animation to give it a nice look. And I think that just about does it. Now we can go ahead and edit this legend if we decide that we want to show different things down here. But for all intents and purposes, this is pretty much done. Although I think I am going to change this to a spline as I like the, uh, the nice curved edges. I think it looks nice. All right. And so we're going to show off one more type of widget here which is going to be one of our filters. Now the filters are very important tools here. The filters are going to be able to filter the rest of your dashboard to show data that you choose. So we're gonna go ahead and start with a combo box. And we're gonna size this to take up the rest of our space. Now we're going to go ahead and assign some data to this. So one thing that's a common theme between all of these widgets is the products. So let's go ahead and pull in a product field here so we can filter by that product. Now, one thing to mention here as well is you, when you're doing these filters, you want to always enable multi-select. What this allows you to do is select multiple options instead of only one at a time. As you can see, without that selected, you're only able to choose one. If it's selected, you can choose as many as you would like. So at this point, we pretty much have a full up and running dashboard. Now there are a few things we're gonna do before we fully get this up and running and published. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to preview this just to make sure in the preview view that it looks all right. So to me, that's what, that's what we're gonna go ahead and see when we actually publish this dashboard. You can see this all looks good. All the data points look correct. You can also view these widgets in a full screen mode here if you would like to do that. And you can export these from here as well. But we'll get into that in just a minute. So I think this looks pretty good. So I'm gonna close this preview <clears throat> and we're gonna go ahead and publish this dashboard. So we do have a couple different options to publish. We have an option to publish this publicly or an option to publish this privately. Now a public dashboard can be viewed by anyone that has a link to that dashboard. Although typically companies do not want to do this as anyone can see that data around the world. If you publish something privately, then only people that have access to that dashboard are able to view it. And so especially with user sensitive data or uh, data that's going to be, uh, has you know, sensitive information in it, uh, you're going, going to 100% want to publish this privately, which is the default. So we're going to go ahead and publish this dashboard and hit yes to view this dashboard. And we are in business and up and running. So once this loads in, we're gonna be able to do a few different things. The first thing we're going to be able to do is we can always go back in and edit this after the fact. You know, let's say, you know, you, you made a decision and you didn't think it was the right one and you wanna go back in and say, change this into a pie chart. All you need to do is hit edit and you can go back in and do that. Also a question about uh, sharing this dashboard. Right here with the share feature, we have a few different options. We have a link and then we also have an embed code. So if you want to directly embed this into one of your programs or one of your web pages, you can do that as well. One of the next options is our comment feature. So you can see this comment box up here, as well as on top of each individual widget. Within here, you can have a conversation on this widget, tag individuals, as well as this will send out an email notification to the people that you tag. So let's say right here, I'm looking at, you know, I think this is a little bit low. We need to get these numbers up. And I wanna say, hey, Zach, we need to get these numbers up so I can tag myself here and then type out a message and that'll go directly to the individual without having to go off of this dashboard. You also have the option to go full screen here as well. So you can take any one of these widgets and full screen it and then export these. So we do have export options to go to image, PDF, CSV and Excel. So you can export that data to any one of those options. Now, the last thing we're going to show today is how this filter actually works in practice. So as you can see, we built this filter here with all the different products involved. We're gonna go ahead and select a few of these and you'll see that in real time that will change to reflect those three products. So right there, you can see that we now have the three products we suggested 
that we've selected, only viewing those three. We can always take one out, add a couple different ones in, and you can play around with these filters at any time. And all you have to do to reset the dashboard is either highlight everything or take off all of them as well. And if you do have a lot more options and a lot more boxes, you can also go in here and search for the one that you're specifically looking for. If you have more than, let's say, you know, six and you have to scroll for a bit. All right, so it looks like we had a question come in is, can you customize expressions with the data set imported within Bold BI? And the answer is yes. So if you go, we'll go back into our edit view here and we'll take a look at the expressions that we have at our fingertips. All right, so we'll go back into our data source here on the right, and we'll go back into our edit to view this data source. So within this data source right here, we will go ahead and click here on the custom expressions. So this will edit the data that we have within our data source. So here are a large number of these expressions that we're able to show. Let's say, for instance, this one right here contains, this will return true if the given string expression contains the specified substring expression. And there are some very large words there, and uh, they're, they're always, you know, some of them are a bit over my head, um, but this explains how to do that expression. So all you would need to do is double click that and then add in whatever it asks for here. Now with these, uh, these, as I said, act very similarly to how Excel functions work. So if you're well-versed in Excel, then this will be right up your alley. So you see right there that we have if functions, if null functions, uh, very similar to how Excel works. And so that's how we would edit um, expressions and add customized expressions uh, from our data set within Bold BI. But at this time, uh, we've gone through, we've built the full dashboard. I've shown you how to create your widgets, how to get your first dashboard up and running. I want to also reiterate that when you go to the Bold BI website here, if you go to the home page here and you select the create a dashboard, this is where you can start your 15 day free trial. You can also start it by going to our pricing tab and clicking on the start your free trial there. I encourage everyone today to go ahead and sign up for their free trial get your hands dirty and get you know get in there and really see if this is, is going to be the correct fit for your company as we want you to be able to test this and make sure it's going to be the correct thing for you uh, you will be hearing from uh, some associates here that will be able to answer your questions in the future um, so they're going to be able to answer questions you have uh, anything that wasn't covered today as well as uh, questions about uh, pricing and terms you can connect with us here on YouTube, which is where the webinar will be posted after this is done. So this should hopefully be posted today and you will all receive a link to this as well. If there's anyone at your organization or your company that would like to view this, they can do so that way. You can also connect with us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. But at this time, I wanna thank everyone for joining our webinar today. It's been a pleasure presenting to everyone here. You can uh, give us a call at the numbers listed above uh, you will also be receiving, as I said, an email or a phone call from an associate here at the office. And please feel free to ask those people any questions that you have. Um, but otherwise, thank you again, everyone, for joining us today. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much.